Hello. I'd like to talk about educating tomorrow's consumers. Let me first tell you what we do. We identify consumption down to the socket, second and appliance. And that's the where, the when and the what. That's quite unusual. Normally most people get an electricity bill. I've got no idea where it actually goes, what's using it, when it's using it. But this tool enables you to actually see exactly where it's being used, when it's being used and what it's being used by. And we do that to enable you to change your behaviour. If you can't measure something, you can't manage it. But when you see what everything's costing, and you'll be very surprised at what some things cost, you can do something about it. The other thing we actually do is we enable best practices. Because we monitor lots and lots of schools, we can tell you if that particular function in your school is costing twice of what we've seen elsewhere. Um, this is all done obviously very anonymously, but by this method we can share best practice. Lastly, we enable you to have real return on investments um, calculated. For example, if you've got a refrigerator which is using £500 a day, well that's very interesting, we now know it costs £500 a day, but you know, we could tell you that we saw maybe another refrigerator doing exactly the same job, costing £300. Now you know how much the refrigerator costs, therefore you know what the real return on investment will be and when the payback period is. Um, this is what we enable you to do when you have real information. That's what we do. What you do is you change your behaviour and you change your infrastructure. A lot of it is down to behaviour change. When you actually see where the energy is being used, when it's being used, you can do something about it. It's the old Donald's Rums thing, thing, field thing. Um, he said, you know, there are things we know we don't know, but there are a lot of things we know, don't know we don't know. And that's actually what we put an end to. We show you what's really happening and you'll be very surprised. And when you see what's happening, you can change not only how something's used, but maybe its whole procedures, how people work. Um, obviously you can change infrastructure, uh, we'll be able to identify any appliances which are faulty and believe me in the typical school with several hundred appliances there will be a number of appliances which are um, not operating optimally. Uh, we can tell you about those and we can tell you about the ones which are very inefficient, obsolete. So that's what you do. Let me tell you how we do what we do. We basically uh, monitor a lot of spurs in your school so we can actually tell where the energy is being used. These little sensors that we use, they don't actually do anything but send via the internet the information about the load on that spur. All the heavy lifting is done on our servers where we analyse the information. We disaggregate it and what that means is we take the information from a single sensor, like, say for example a sensor which is feeding a spur, of sockets and we'll look for all of the appliances plugged into those sockets that's called disaggregation we'll aggregate them we'll pick up a number of different spurs that for example are responsible for lighting all over the building and we'll show the bursar what all the lighting costs for the total school is or what a particular part of the building costs we'll compare that information not only between schools but between periods so you know we'll compare yesterday with today with tomorrow and alert you if things are changing. We do this continuously by the way to enable us to send you alarms. You can set an alert say if this goes over a certain amount let me know. We store the information obviously permanently and um, that enables you to continuously look at what's happening and monitor your progress. The most important thing we do of course is we present the information and we do that over the web so you can see it on the web browser, you can see it on your email, clients, mobile phones, whatever. Um, but we do it so it's targeted at the end user. So for example, if a facilities manager logs into a web application, he sees a physical view. That is, he sees how the school's laid out, how the distribution boards are laid out, how he sees the building. But if the bursar logs in, he sees um, the sports hall. He sees the science faculty. He sees the staff room. He sees the functional units of the school and he can see, oh, you know, I noticed that that particular sports hall on a Saturday when you maybe lease it to some community function, you know, costs this much. We focus the view on the user and that's never more important than when we actually bring it to the pupils because the pupils are not interested in the whole school. What they're really interested in is their environment. So we show them where they're using energy. It might be the classroom, so they can see their whiteboards and their lighting. And this is a great teaching aid, and I'll come to this in a minute. Let me give you some examples of um, what this looks like. Here's a couple of um, public houses, a Toby and a Little Owl. And um, this is the physical view. This is how the facilities management people would see it. Here's go. There's the fire alarm, da -da -da, kitchen, first floor, the physical layout of the building. But what the, um, the display is being used for in this 
situation is we're clicking on the two electricity feeds and we're looking at the way they compare. And we see that the Toby uses more electricity early in the morning than the little owl. And so we might want to look into that. We can zoom in. Another view would be to actually um, look at it from a function point of view. So here's the kitchens, the staff areas, the lighting in the public house, the refrigeration, the sockets, the air conditioning. And uh, we're comparing the two kitchens. And here you can see the same thing. The Toby actually picks up the consumption much earlier in the morning. That's what, in fact why there's more electricity used in the Toby. And that's because it's carvery. Obviously it has to start preparing food earlier. So by looking at it from a functional point of view, we've solved that riddle. Here's another view. This is a view of just the refrigeration um, appliances within each establishment. And this is interesting because what they've done is they've compared the walk-in fridge in the little owl with the walk-in fridge in the Toby. And they can see that the walk-in fridge in the Toby uses 50% more power than the walk-in fridge in the little owl. And uh, they were curious about that. Um, did they need to do an infrastructure upgrade? No, it turns out that in fact they're the identical walk-in fridges and the reason why it's using so much more power is the staff in the Toby leave the door open all the time. So it indicated that they had to change behaviour. No cost to them, just educate the staff they had to change and that saved them a fortune. Here's an example of what I was talking about in terms of disaggregation. This is a uh, four floor building and we're looking at the sensor on the reception and you can see in reception when they come in at eight o'clock they start putting things on computers, fans, kettles, fridges, whatever and it was actually the fridge that was interesting because you'd expect the fridge to be on all the time. But this fridge we found on this load signature here um, was only on during the time the staff were there. And it turns out the staff bought in their own little portable um, picnic type refrigerator. We were able to pick that up. Uh, not that it was a big cost, but it, you know it was simply a matter of an, uh, demonstrating the fact that we could police where their energy was being used. Uh, here's a more... Uh, this simple example you can probably see the um, the load here in the orange and you can probably see a signature on it and sure enough the software has picked it out this is in fact um, a large college number of buildings and there's a central space in the middle of the campus they call the HE space I'm not sure what that's for but it's not used very often uh, which you can see it's got a constant load almost but the software picked up this air conditioner which was running 24 hours a day and is responsible for 10% of the cost in that particular building and when they looked at it on a longer period it was on 24-7 so there's a 10% saving that they could have actually that in fact they did make I believe so there's a couple of examples so let me tell you how you do it having told us you what we do um, you show consumption to your pupils for example you can show a classroom you can show an appliance and you can highlight that over a long period because that's when the cost really sort of like dawns on them. This can be the class they're being taught in, by the way. And I'll show you an example of that. You then get them to actually do something about it. Maybe it's just switch off something or maybe it's change habits or maybe it's um, you, you adopt a complete complicated procedure about how something's used. But you do something. That's all that's important, that they do something because you want to let them see the... Cause the, the effect of that change. You want to see the cause and effect. It's the cause and effect which really nails home how easy it is to save energy. And let me give you some examples. If you ask people how much things cost in their home, they'll have no idea. Ask your pupils to put these particular appliances in their home into order of consumption. I guarantee none of them will get this right. Because we're all actually filled with these little... Um, prejudices, bits of folklore, um, little bits of myths. Turn an electric uh, a fluorescent light on and off and it uses more energy than if you leave it on. Uh, oven, gosh, that's incredibly expensive. TV standby, leaving your TV plugged in all the time it uses a lot of energy, doesn't it? In fact, very rare will it be that anyone will put these in order. It's the laptop which uses the most energy and something very easy to switch off when you're not using. Maybe not so the fridge, but that shocks people that fridges take such a lot and they vary enormously um, ovens and TVs they're actually not even above a laptop um, cupboard light being left on all day very expensive comparatively and TV standby not really an issue to be fair um, but you see we're getting rid of the uh, the myths and we're giving them real hard facts and now we do that in the school we say, how much do you think in a typical day, and this particular school that I'm going to talk about, academy in fact it is, 1,000 pupils secondary school, how much do you actually think each of these areas cost? What, what order would you put them in? None of the pupils will get this. In fact, two of the staff will get it. Maybe the FM guy will know that the AC is the most expensive thing. 
Um, but nobody will get the next thing. They all think kitchens and IT are expensive items. And in fact, it's lighting in all schools that's the most expensive thing, even though school is generally a fairly daytime activity. The sockets are the next. And again, they don't expect that because they don't think a lot of stuff's plugged in. But in fact, if you take all the labs and the staff rooms and the whiteboards and so and so forth and so forth, sockets always come out fairly high. Kitchen is down here. And IT's last, typically, and this is a fairly clued up place. This has got server rooms, it's got a couple of ICT suites. Um, it's not really actually a big user. Let's look at this academy actually over a day, in fact. Here we're looking at actually the physical view again. It's the facilities managers, all the, the areas in the school. And here is the order of um, consumption. And as you can see, top of the list is the AC. It's called MCC here. 1,800 out of the 4,500. And you can see all of the parts on the MC is the Ruth plant, the south teaching, the main plant, the north teaching, the middle teaching. All AC, apart from here, we've got the kitchen. But mainly AC. What is interesting, though, when you look at the distribution of this consumption is when it occurs. Um, no one's in the school before six, and no one is in the school after 1800. This is just a school. It's not um, a multi-purpose facility. And so when no one's there, a third of the energy is being used. And if you move the from to 1800 to the two the next day at 600, you get this. You get the 1200 kilowatt hours being used when no one's in the school. And again, we can look at what's happening. AC's up there on the top. But interestingly, it's only the south teaching part that's the big one that means there's obviously something wrong because why isn't it the same as the north teaching and the middle teaching and in fact there was a fault in that part of the AC handling next thing is kitchen supplies my gosh why is the kitchen supplies using more during the night than it is during the day there was a big load of problems in the kitchen I can let you know surface you expect them to be on um, but you didn't probably expect the ICT suites to be on so they're obviously leaving all the desktop computers on if you turned off everything at night it wouldn't affect anyone really but you'd save a third of the electricity. And they were incredibly impressed by this. Let's move to another um, education establishment. This is, this is a sixth form college, a 70s odd building. Um, not particularly interesting, but we were able to go to each one of the rooms for the lighting, the power and so forth. And we showed in the environmental unit the power being used in their own classroom and they were very confused by this particular power signature. They wanted to know what used more during the night than it did during the day. So they went around and they switched things off. And eventually they found that one of these um, through-the-window AC units was actually on all the time. They actually didn't know it worked at all because they always thought the place was too hot during the summer and freezing during the winter. But sure enough, there was this um, AC unit running all the time. So they switched it off. They switched it off on the 24th of June. 15.30 and no one noticed. They didn't notice and none of the other users of the room noticed. But when they ran an, um, a cost um, function over the six weeks of the term, here's the AC unit, just that same AC unit using over £20 a week there. This is the week they turned it off. But, but between when they turned it off and the end of term, they save over, over £50. And um, when they calculated out the whole time, it was like £500 pounds a year. 500 odd pounds a year times there's 30 odd rooms with these through the window AC units is an enormous amount of money. They were incredibly pleased with themselves. They'd actually identified this waste that had just been inherited probably you know from 10 years ago when these units were put in when people didn't care about electricity. It's this type of thing which really enables you to educate consumers and if you can educate them at this age they'll carry this um, knowledge throughout their lives. So I'm glad to talk to you about other examples. Thank you very much for your attention.